All right, so in the last video, we took a look at using the new Pro EQ3, which is a dynamic EQ. And the main functions that we covered in that video is using the dynamic EQ in two different ways. One would be to cut or remove harsh frequencies, areas that we have builds up, things like 3.5K in a vocal, things like the drum loop that I played where it was just, it had way too much edge and way too much aggression. And you can fine tune your range, either negative or positive. You can uh, combine that with a static offset and then the Q to set the width in terms of how narrow or how wide you want the focus to be on that. And then we have a solo option, which allows us to listen uh, in context with everything and we can kind of dial in everything together. Now, one other thing to point out is that this dynamic EQ, this Pro EQ3, this also has a sidechain option. And those sidechain options are really, really useful in a lot of contexts. First things first, what I'm going to do is go with save as, and we'll call this uh, part two. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to kind of identify a couple different tracks that are maybe competing with each other in some way. Let's have a listen to this. Now let's have a listen to the bass. I'm gonna dial up my waveform so I can see them a little bit better. Usually if I'm printing stems, if I've done anything, for example, where I've, I have a kick, I would have already side-chained the kick, which is a, a global, like a static level of a compressor. I would have already side-chained this, and this would actually be embedded so that the transient of the kick is gonna pop out and tuck that in. But you know what? An argument could be made that we can use this example and we'll do the exact same thing. So here we have the synth. And then here we have a bass. Let's play the two of these together. They don't sit too bad together, but let's make an adjustment anyways. So what I'm going to do is I need to choose what I want to be EQ'd and what I want to listen to the sidechain. So what I'm going to do is let's put the EQ on the synth track. Let's activate the sidechain. And what do I want it to listen to? Okay, I'm going to get this to listen to the bass and we can click the output of this. And now if I come over, where is it? Over here, our sidechain is being sent out. Where are we here? Oh no, okay. This isn't necessarily what I want. Let's go back here and let's change the sidechain. I don't want it to be the output. I just want it to be a send. And I can make the send either pre-fader or post-fader. Let's make it pre-fader for now. So now this will be coming out of the main out still, but I can have the sidechain running all the time. Okay, let's go back here. Now notice we have these two different frequencies, right? We have two different curves. The purple one represents what's incoming on the side chain. So the purple one over here would be the bass. So now what we need to do is we need to determine if there's any overlap or any areas that I want to basically um, be processed by this Pro EQ and I wanna be listening to that external side chain. So let's dial in right over here. I think this would be a great way to do this. And let's go with peaking. And in this case, we'll go ahead and press play. Now we can search for frequencies where there's an overlap. Okay, I'm gonna say that I'm happy with that one here. Now it's gonna be the same thing. We're going to set a range. Uh, let's say that I'm okay with this going up to minus six. Take a look at what's happening here with this because it's kind of hard because they're following the same notes. Uh, when we have this one over here where it goes da 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 da, Notice what's happening here with the reduction. Watch this here, watch this. Okay, I could also change this to a shelf. Maybe we'll go with like a 12 dB shelf. We'll adjust the frequency, maybe here. 
So because we're sending this out pre-fader, this basically is going to be based on the threshold of this audio event. And even if I change the level, the threshold that we dial in, even if it's automated, this isn't really going to change. It's always going to remain static here. So for example, let's take this one and let's hop in here. Take a listen to what's happening. Let me really exaggerate this. So we can get a really, really nice blend between everything. We can have the range dialed in perfectly to have the exact amount of range that we want this to dip out to fit into context with the mix. We can adjust our cue, shelf, our frequency. And then also, let's say that we're doing a little bit more than we expected. I might be able to also give this a little bit of a static boost to compensate for some of that. And keep in mind, exaggerating it. Now that's all well and good, but let's see now how this works in context of the whole entire mix. And in this case, let's move back to this and open up the Pro EQ. Now let's disable this. there's a little bit more room for that low end to breathe. And if we listen to everything in context together, <laughs> so that's one area where using this side chain is really awesome is basically having it listen to another instrument and any um, reduction that's happening or even any uh, expansion that's happening can be based upon the thresholds of, of the sidechain send that you're using. And also you can dial in exactly which frequency band you want it to react to. So for these reasons, I definitely recommend messing around with this and kind of getting... Um, getting your head wrapped around how useful this can be. A lot of the times when I have a sub bass and a kick, I'm always ducking the sub bass just for a moment. And usually for that, I just use like a really transparent compressor with, with a relatively fast attack and medium release kind of time to the song. But it will definitely be ducking the whole entire uh, sub bass for a moment when the kick comes through. But in these cases, I could have that be really focused in and specific to one particular frequency that really just has to do with where the clash is and where the overlap and the smearing is happening. And for that reason, it can be a really, really useful tool, both in production and in mixing. Anyways, that is using the side chain uh, within the Pro EQ3 and the Dynamic EQ to basically do some automatic ducking that's completely frequency or band dependent on what your choice are and what you're choosing to send to the side chain and um, just getting everything to work in conjunction together in a really, really transparent way. Hope that you enjoyed this content and I will catch you for more in the next video. Cheers.